All right, uh, we've been working a little bit now with gamma functions, and from our accrued knowledge, we've been trying to use them to solve different types of integrals. And here we have the integral of e to the minus alpha lambda squared d lambda, where lambda goes from zero to infinity. And this might seem a far cry from our bona fide gamma integral, but we'll look at it and we'll say, well, what happens if we make a substitution? Because if we, if it's going to be in the form of a gamma integral, we have to have e to the minus variable, not the variable squared or cubed or whatever. So our first hint would be, well, then let's take this right here and just set it equal to x. And if we follow through with the substitution then, what kind of an integral form do we get that comes out of it? So let's see here. We have that. Let's say let x be equal to alpha times lambda squared. So dx that will be equal to 2 alpha lambda d lambda. Okay, and we want to get now an expression just for, we want to get a replacement now for d lambda. So let's see, d lambda, that will equal, dividing both sides of the equation by this, that will equal 1 over 2 alpha lambda times dx. Alpha is just a constant here. But on this side of the equation, we want everything expressed in terms of the variable x. So we don't want to have a lambda here. So let's see. Um, we can go back to our original substitution here. Um, and it looks like lambda, that would be then the square root of x divided by the square root of alpha. And actually, to be entirely correct, I would say that would equal plus or minus that. We're just going to take the plus term, though. So let's see, we're going to have in here then that d lambda, that will equal 1 over 2 alpha. And then we have lambda in the denominator. Um, let's multiply by the reciprocal here. So then we'll have the square root of alpha divided by the square root of x times dx, or we'll have that d lambda will equal the square root of lambda divided by lambda, that will be 1 over 2 times the square root, but not a lambda but alpha, be 1 over 2 times the square root of alpha, Take this upstairs, we'll have x to the minus one half dx. Here we had, well, let's just go back. We have this substitution here dx equals 2 alpha lambda d lambda. Alpha is just a constant. Uh, we want to replace d lambda here. So d lambda, that will equal dx divided by 1 over 2 alpha times lambda. But on this side of the equation, we want everything expressed in terms of x. So we want a replacement for lambda. So we go back to our original substitution. Lambda squared is x over alpha, where lambda 
is going to be plus or minus the square root of x divided by the square root of alpha. We'll just take the positive term. So d lambda equals 1 over 2 alpha. And here we have lambda in the denominator. So let's multiply by the reciprocal. That will be the square root of alpha divided by the square root of x times dx. Should be no mistake there. Alpha, square root of alpha divided by alpha. That's going to be the square root of alpha downstairs. And here we'll take this upstairs and write it as x to the minus one half dx. Okay, should be no mistakes there. Um, let's see. Lambda goes from zero to infinity. When lambda is zero, x will be zero. When lambda is infinity, x will be infinity. So let's see here. This integral here, e to the minus x, and then d lambda, that's this term. This is a constant, so we'll keep this out here. And we'll have x to the minus one half dx. x goes from zero to infinity. So let's see if we made our substitutions correct. This here is x, so we're going to have e to the minus x d lambda is this, this is a constant, take this to the outside, and we'll have x to the minus one half dx. So with this substitution, this integral becomes this integral, and not only now is this in the correct form of a gamma function, but we should be able to look at this and say yes, in fact, that's the gamma function of one half, and that equals the square root of pi. So here we'll have then that this is going to equal one over two square root of alpha times this integral here, which is the square root of pi, so this would equal one half the square root of pi divided by alpha. So going back to here, then we have that original integral e to the minus alpha lambda squared d lambda, that was our original integral, that will equal one half square root of lambda divided by alpha. And again, the whole thing really hinged upon looking at this and saying, well, it's not a gamma function. Uh, this would have to be e to the minus some variable to the first power times an x to some power. I said, well, let's see. What happens then if we let x be equal to this? We follow through with our substitution, and this integral then transformed into this integral, which not only is a gamma function, but specifically that's the gamma function of one half, and we know what that is. Once that's done, then everything else rapidly falls into place, and we get this solution here. Um, so that's it for this problem. Um, come back and join us for some more videos. We'll try and tackle some more complicated examples.